quick before he start his awesome talk. He got some two workshops for you guys today. So Cooper is an award-winning art director, designer, and photography hailing from the great state of Texas. In his work, he's trying to create the aha moment where the viewer thinks deeper about the piece and notices the subtle, unspecific twists. So his work has been recognized by a lot of famous um, organizations. The One Club Communication Arts, the Art Directors Club of New York, the Eddies, the DSVC Dallas Show, AIGA Common Dex, and Graphic Magazine. And currently, he works as senior art director at Capital One and is the chairman of 53rd DSVC Dallas Show. Um, a little short introduction how I met Cooper because we compete each other on one design uh, at the beginning of this year called Command Dex. Um, but now we're friends and he's really talented. So no matter who you compete, it might eventually become your friend some days. <laughs> right now, it's your time, Cooper. All right, cool. Let's hope that nothing goes wrong here. So howdy, y'all. Um, of course, I'm painfully Texan, so let's just get right into it. Um, so I'm Cooper Weinstein. Like Zhao said, I'm an art director. I'm a photographer uh, from Texas. Um, currently work at Capital One, uh, but if you didn't already know this, you're probably not where you're supposed to be. So I'm gonna give you all like a second if you need to get out of here. Okay, no? All right. So I'm a photographer, art director, designer, kind of illustrator, creative person. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and... I got a lot of, lot of things to me. <laughs> so, Growing up, I was born in Chicago and I moved to Texas when I was three. Um, I grew up like I've always kind of lived here in uh, like North Dallas. So I grew up in Plano, Plano, a suburb of Dallas. Not a suburb guy. I did not enjoy my time there uh, very much like the cities. Um, so when I was young, my grandpa was a photographer, like just, you know, like a hobby photographer. So I would go and like photograph like the ducks by his pond with him. And, you know, it's just a cool experience. Um, so I kind of grew up like with a camera in my hand. So by eighth grade, I already knew that I want to be a photographer. So it's actually really cool that I was able to go like so far in my life and still be doing what I wanted to do when I was young. Um, I did high school yearbook, which was my introduction to like graphic design and everything. And still, you know, I did it for the photography, but like I still got to make layouts and kind of learn uh, in design very badly. Um, and high school sucked. I, you know, being one of the editors of the yearbook, uh, this may come as a shock. I wasn't one of the coolest people. So, yeah. Um, and then like college was just so much fun for me, like going from high school. Uh, I went to school in Texas A&M Commerce in the middle of nowhere, East Texas. Like there was nothing to do in the town. Um, it was just kind of like a, like a, you know, small little place, but we had fun. We had an amazing program at Commerce for design and photography. Um, I'm also not a country guy. I found that out too. Small towns are just not my thing. Uh, I started out as a photo major when I entered the VizCom program. So with photography, you have to have like a little bit of design background just so you can have, you know, can be a little bit more well-versed. So I was a photo major for three years, you know, just as a photo major. Um, and then I went to this thing called the American Institute of Graphic Arts like conference. And I'm like, oh, photography is a graphic art. There's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff for me. It wasn't as much, <laughs> um, so, but like, because I like still had a little bit of design knowledge, I was able to still, um, you know, kind of blend into the conference. And it was a, like, this is the first time I ever met the larger design community. And it was just such a welcoming community. I met this guy named Michael Beirut, who was a legend at the time. I had no idea who he was. I just thought he was a really nice guy who wanted to review my portfolio. Um, but yeah, so I met with him and he kind of like talked to me and like told me like, hey, maybe you should consider this design thing. 
So I'm like, all right, thanks, mister. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, wow, that was actually like an important moment. Um, so yeah, I added design as a second major. Um, and having two majors isn't, uh, isn't the easiest. I was very stressed. I never slept. Like I had to balance both my workloads. Um, but luckily, because I had so much photography experience and like in photography, you also learn how to problem solve on sets. You learn how to concept and like figure out what you want to, you know, shoot, how you want to do it. And you kind of got get an eye for these things. So because I had that experience and that problem solving abilities, it was able to transfer into design very easily. And I think that's something good about both design and photography is that they really teach you how to problem solve, not just for the things you're working on, but like the general things in life. So super important skill to have. Um, and I just loved every minute of it. Like, I love the stress. I love the squalor. Uh, I'm glad to be over it, but you know, at the time it was fun. Um, and yeah, I did pretty well for myself. Um, so this was me in New York on the, uh, for the young ones, like sponsored by the one club. So it was always a dream of mine to win a one show pencil and I got to do it before I graduated. So that's like dope. Um, and then I really quickly just want to like give a shout out to my mentor, Josh Eggy. Uh, this is him in the photo. And now looking at this photo, I'm realizing how much I'm looking like him right now with the glasses. So that scares me a little. Um, but Josh really taught me like everything I know about concepting. He really kind of like helped me out through the program um, and just a great guy. So I, I do owe him a lot. And then I get a job. Um, so I interned at this amazing agency called Johnson Seekin, where I worked after graduation. Like during my internship, it was very great. We were a super small company back then, like 20 people, uh, or, like yeah, 20, 25. Um, and uh, like on my last day of my internship, they're like, hey, by the way, you have an offer to work here, like whenever you want after graduation. So like, you know, as soon as you graduate, you have a desk here. So that was really great to know and it took away a lot of stress. Um, agency life though, isn't like Mad Men. I thought I was done with the late nights and you know, all of that. Um, and I could finally have a work-life balance and get a lot of money and, you know, live like Don Draper. Um, no, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> so I was still, you know, working very late. I, there's a lot of sacrifices I had to make, um, but that's life in an agency. Still, I was surrounded by great people, a great team, like we had fun. Um, it's just, you know, it was a hard life. Um, and then COVID hit and like, most people I was affected by the pandemic. I got let go and um, it was really hard because no one was hiring. I had all like, I had interviews lined up because this like I got laid off very early in the pandemic. Um, so I had interviews lined up with like other agencies and uh, all of a sudden, you know, I was interviewing and the calls just kind of stopped. I'm like, hmm, did I do something wrong? And then I find out that the people I was interviewing with like either got let go or, you know, there were layoffs in the company themselves. And it was just very hard for everyone. So I spent about eight months unemployed. During that time though, I really kind of rediscovered the purpose of design for me, which was like more as a therapeutic thing. So uh, instead of always being stressed about, you know, creating stuff and like, oh, does this have to be good enough? Like, can I post this on Instagram? Can I like send this out to, you know, earn money? Um, I really remember that it's my outlet and that like, I love to do it and just create for the fun of it. So I've stopped worry worrying about like the like counts on Instagram and uh, I just make stuff that makes me happy. Now I work at Capital One in-house. Um, before the pandemic, I probably never would have considered in-house but like, y'all, let me tell you, it is so fantastic. Um, like, if you're thinking about working, like consider in-house too, because it's just been like, my team is so great. Like, I love the people I work with, they're fun. I still get to make a lot of really cool stuff. Um, it's incredible. Um, I have a work-life balance, like everyone cares like so deeply for each other and like understands the value of like having their time off. Um, it's just, it's fantastic to work with. It's such a healthy environment. And yeah, it's like, you still get to make a lot of cool stuff. So chapter two, an introduction.
So when I say kill your ideas, what do I mean? I mean that for every good idea you have, you need to have 30 bad ones. Like you need to exhaust it. You need to really ideate and not stop. If your first idea is good, you probably need to make sure that there isn't a better one. Um, my alarm is going off because I usually wake up around this time, so sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, there is no such thing as a perfect idea. You can have a good idea, but there's always going to be a better idea. So you need to be striving to find that better idea and be open to it if it comes up. Um, advertising is an industry of rejection. This one is so important. Um, it's something that I heard in college and it just stuck with me. Your ideas are going to die uh, either by the clients or by you know your professors, um, by your creative director. Like it's everything's going to change. It's not going to you know from the day you concept it to the day it like launches. It's not going to be the same. It's going to be like you know, you're going to have to change things. You're going to have to like make compromises. You're going to have to do stuff that makes the design worse because that's what the client wants. It always happens. And the important thing is you can't get too attached to your ideas. You can't get too attached to, you know, your first thoughts, because if you do like, you're not going to make it, you have to be open to change. You have to be open to things getting killed. Um, yeah. And then what you like and what works are two separate things. Josh had a rule in our class uh, when I was a student that you couldn't say like, uh, when you're talking about something, you say this works or this doesn't, not I like this because. Because, you know, if you, you could like a nice floral treatment, but if you put it for a motorcycle company, like that doesn't work, like that, that doesn't mix. So it's important to understand that just because you like it doesn't mean that it's making the things better. So the work and the process, section three. So I'm just gonna kind of speed through this because I don't know how I'm doing on time. Zhao, am I doing pretty good? Okay, no answer. That makes me nervous. <laughs> so um, yeah, can I just get like a thumbs up or something that like everything's working well? She runs the camera. Yeah, okay, it's good, all right. So you're gonna have to edit this whole section out. Um, so this is a whiskey that I made uh, for Title 21. It celebrates the 21st Amendment and the repeal of prohibition, which was the 18th Amendment. And for this, I took the label and uh, you know I really thought about like how the process of repealing an amendment went. And it involves the Supreme Court and involved the legal system a lot. So I wanted to make a you know, a, a bottle design that reflected that. So here's Lady Justice and her blindfold actually becomes the whiskey label. Um, so just using the materials to create a deeper meaning. This is my Christmas card that I sent to all my friends during the pandemic. Um, just kind of a slice of life thing that I did, but you know, here are the ornaments made out of COVID balls. Uh, my handwriting is way worse than what this is. This took me like the longest part of the process just to draw it all. Uh, you get a little mask with him, or you get a little snowman with the mask under his nose. Uh, and then this little guy in the corner, because um, I am a very forgetful man. This was a super fun client that I got to work on. This is the Meat Fight 1K. And what it is, it it's a giant barbecue and like beer competition, or not beer competition, but giant barbecue like event uh, that has beer, they have like other food. Um, but the, it's like a joke of a race, like, you know, no one actually runs the one K is where you walk from booth to booth, just stuffing your face. So, um, I really wanted to play up this faux athlete kind of aspect. And the request was, Hey, I need this to be very patriotic. Cause for some reason, when people go to this, they always wear red, white, and blue. So I'm like, all right, cool. How about I do an American gladiators inspired theme? And I have everyone posing and like, you know, the classic like muscle poses. Um, but instead of like actually flexing, they're holding food or beer or whatever. So just a really fun one to work on. Um, this was Chili's. Uh, I worked on them a lot. So these were the gift cards one year and they were in like every Chili's in America, which was cool. 
Um, but yeah, just turning like food into different landscapes. But I, I used, I love to use a lot of forced connections in this, um, just to my work in general. Um, Catch-22, this is a book all about the hypocrisy of war and like how kind of, you know, futile it is. Um, so with this, this is like, like on the spine, when you line them up, it forms the this side up arrows. But in the negative space of that, you can kind of see like the shape of a bomb. Um, the book itself, I wanted it to like, when it was on the shelf, I wanted it to look like it was wrong. So it's upside down, but you also have some typography letting you know that, hey, no, this can actually be read in both ways. Because um, when you flip it over, it's a plane being bombed and then it's a plane dropping those same bombs. So a really cool piece that is one of my favorites that came out of school. And then I'm gonna take a break real quick and just have a little sip of water. I'm used to hearing myself talk a lot, but this is a little excessive. <laughs> yeah. So my first and the last school projects. So this was my first, like first two projects in school um, in my intro to design classes. So this one on the left is about like, you know, uh, government surveillance and everything like NSA. So um, you can see how kind of janky the angles are on it. Like I tried, uh, like, but it is an interesting concept, which I want to show, even if the proportions and everything are wrong. Uh, so there is hope for y'all. And then the one on the right, I had to think about that, is my relationship between travel, work, and sleep. So like how far I went each day, how little I slept. Uh, especially on the nights right before you know classes were due and how much I like worked um so yeah just this is where I was and this is where I ended up uh with my last poster in school so here's Kim Kardashian and a tweet from her saying bored on the boat because I can't jetpack or jet ski so this project was for the young ones and it was how do you like create empathy uh, and make people care about the refugee crisis. So my approach to this was to take these horrible images of the refugee crisis and, you know, show the struggle and then overlay them with uh, tweets of celebrities complaining about all their, you know, terrible problems that are just minor inconveniences. Um, so yeah, this is just a really impactful uh, ad series um, and it won me the bronze pencil at the one show uh, and was the only uh, only pencil given out to the US in, uh, in that year for, for this category, uh, which was the design brief. Um, so what's the difference between the two? Concepting. I concepted a lot more. I knew how to concept. This actually is in all of them. I'm missing a few pages. Uh, but I just can't find them for the life of me. So this is all that I have in my notebooks. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, got to keep ideating. And a lot of these ideas are really terrible. So don't read too, too close to them. But the one that was the, you know, winner was very late in the process. Like when I was about to be like, all right, I give up. Uh -huh. And I, you know, even then I thought it was a good idea, but I didn't know if it was that great of an idea. So I, I still wanted a concept more. Um, that's why deadlines are good. They force you to stop. Uh, the US Forest Service. So this one, I'm gonna take you more on a story. So the way I start with this, pro this project and a lot of my projects is I make a list of like, all right, what's all the things in nature? What are all the like visual motifs that I can use for this? How can I combine them and like, you know, create something out of them. Um, so I do this whole exploration thing before I even start concepting the logos. Uh, I do a lot of research, but these two logos right here um, were the two that were kind of narrowed down. This one in the middle um, is a like eagle that, you know, had the wings wrap all the way around and then the negative space between the feathers it formed a tree. Um, and my professors really love that one. And I'm like, I mean, it's okay, I guess. But the one I really loved was this one on the right. And it was a tree, it had blades of grass and it like created this whole scene. And then I'm like, 
oh, in the negative space, it has this eagle, like the root from the tree forms this beak. And I'm like, this is it. This is the next FedEx logo. Like, I'm, it's going to be great. Um, and my professors pushed so hard for this other one. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll work on it. I'll still do it. But like, you know, I got to tell you, I don't see where this is going. Um, so I kept ideating. I kept refining. Um, I changed the style of it. I was open to like, you know, like if I hadn't changed the style, it would have been a terrible logo. So my professors told me to, and you just, you got to listen to people around you. You really do. You got to listen to your professors. You got to listen to your bo bosses. Um, you got to listen to your co coworkers. Um, Cause you know, getting outside pr perspectives on things is just so vitally important. And like, thank God I listened to people because if I didn't, I never would have had this logo. And this logo was in communication arts. Like it, it got the, uh, like it just, it did so well um, and it, it's beautiful. Uh, and then here's a poster I designed with it. Um, so always listen to people. And then Zoom. This is the last kind of story from this section. Um, I'm still good on time, right? Yeah. So this was a weird one because this was the first idea I had. Uh, this was from Command X and me and Zhao got briefed. And then like almost immediately after we got briefed, I took a post-it note and I sketched this out and I'm like, all right, this is dope. Now what? So I, the way I started this is it's the full screen icon. Um, I played with the scale and then wanted it to like zoom in and have the physical action of zooming uh, as well. Uh, just, you know, playing up the name because it's not the funnest name. And then I'm like, all right, well, in the shape, there's the C figure, um, there's three planes and there's three different ways we use Zoom. We use it for business and education. We use it for social stuff. And then we use it for events and conferences. So I'm like, all right, there's all these layers to it. Like, this is really cool. And, you know, some of this stuff like the Z and the, the portals and shapes I found out like during my creative process. Uh, but yeah, this is the first idea I had and it was super weird. And uh, here you can see kind of my sketches um, for it. Like this is just like where I started in the top. I wish my cursor was working. Um, and then you can see just a lot of really bad ideas here. Um, and then you can see me refining it. Um, but with this, th it was difficult because you know, I had this idea that I already kind of liked and I felt good about. And I'm like, all right, well, that means there's got to be something better still. So I just did this whole exploration. Like I spent three days just concepting um, and really, you know, really pushing myself and pushing myself to think harder um, until I just exhausted it. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I am doing that. Um, so it's just a weird experience for me. Um, but like, this is kind of shows like, you got to keep going, you got to keep pushing because you never know what's going to, what you're going to find up if you, or what you're going to miss out on if you stop. Part D, lessons learned. So stay with me for a second. This is a graph that kind of shows like where, when you concept and when you come up with solutions, um, where the bare minimum is, where the like true magic happens, where like the great ideas that you find at the one club or like in communication arts or, you know, wherever they may be, like that's where the best ideas are. Where you see them blown up on social, whatever. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the ideas that are just a little too far, um, where they don't meet the client's needs. They're not on brief, like they're, you know, they're not practical, they're not realistic, like all of that. Um, so a lot of people think that, you know, people like Michael Beirut, Milton Glaser, all these famous designers, art directors, you know, I'm not gonna put myself in that category, but if you want to, you can. Um, but with all these people, every idea they have is a great idea. Like they put pen to paper and it's instantly gold. Um, but that's, you know, they, they think that and they're like, all right, well, I want to have a good idea. I'm going to aim for that zone that they're in. Um, even though, you know, that's not really how it happens. Like there's a lot of bad ideas too that they have, but yeah, people aim for here. And when they do, they find themselves 
really being more safe with it. They can get close, but um, you'll never really, like if you're just aiming for the good idea and to do what everyone else is doing, you'll never really get there. You'll come close, but not all the way. Um, so you'll always kind of like trail. Um, so what I found is you really want to aim a little further. You want to push yourself. You want to go a little wilder. You want to go a little, little crazier, um, but not too far. So the way the actual creative process looks when you do this is you'll have, you know, some, some safe stuff. You'll have some, a lot of really bad ideas. You'll have some cool ideas that are like not realistic at all. You'll be in the way off target area. Um, but because you've kind of like gone a little further and uh, you'll, you'll stumble on the really good stuff too. Um, it's always better to go a little too far and a little too out there and have to pull it back and reel it back and simplify than it is to not go far enough. Because if you don't go far enough, you don't know how far you still have to go. So you just gotta really, really kind of push yourself and push your thoughts and push your creative solving abilities. So never stop ideating. I'm constantly thinking um, I'm, you know, when I'm not in my sketchbook and like, like it's hard for me to know when to quit because I'll just always be thinking. Um, and like, I figured out what I'm gonna do for my Christmas card this year on my way to Kroger, cause I just happen to be thinking about it. You gotta listen to others. You gotta listen to your coworkers. You gotta listen to your friends. Um, like you just, you know, you need outside opinions because for a lot of my work, which uses forced connections, I'm constantly having to ask people like, hey, does this work? Can you tell what's going on? Because I know what's going on but I don't know if the outside observer who's never seen something like this before will understand. Um, so this is so important to get outside opinions, like to just, you know, get that feedback. And it just, it makes your work better. It really does. No man's an island. Like the more, the more feedback that you can get, the better the designs can be because everyone comes at it with this unique perspective. And get over yourself. You're not that great. I'm not that great. Like this is an, an industry where you want to have an ego because, you know, we're all like, we should all be kind of lifting each other up. We should all like, no one is better than another. Um, me and my friend uh, kind of joked, like we met at the one show club and we were in line and we kind of like, we're joking around because you know, I'm from a small school, he was from a small school, and we were surrounded by all these art portfolio, like, you know, students and our kids, and um, they found out where we went to school, and, like, they wanted nothing to do with us, like, we, you know, we just happened to crash the party, so it's just a really wild thing, don't have an ego, be a good person, you're gonna have a lot more fun that way, you're gonna be happier, like, yeah. Um, so at this point, a little Q and A action, or do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? Do you need to direct your anger at me? I don't know. One question, Jack. Uh, you have plans of like opening up your own agency or business, and like being the boss, or what's the ultimate goal for you? Um, probably not for me. Um, I really am bad with finances and with handling workload. Um, so I feel like if I ever started an agency, I would, you know, I couldn't really freelance full time. Um, so right now it's not in the plans. Um, but I also like where I'm working right now. Um, you know, I like the agency world. So I've had good experiences. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I, I have enough self control to run my own place. Uh Questions? Okay, Cody. Cool, cool. um, when you say you work in Elsa Capital One, what kind of is that detail? Yeah, so great question. So I'm a senior art director there, and my main tasks are uh, like I work with the dealer automotive team, um, and what I do is I market it. Or I market like our products and services to other dealers. So Capital One finances like a ton of car loans. Um, 
And what we do is we have these products where like, you know, uh, people can go on their computer. It's called on navigator. Maybe you've seen the, uh, like the Schitt's Creeks ads, uh, but people can like go on their computer, they can go on their phone and they can find a car that way. It sends it to the dealers, it can get financed. So I, I do a lot of marketing with that where I just go like business to business almost, I market to the dealers. Um, and then I also do like a lot of event stuff. So we had this thing called Diamond Event and it was really cool. I got to create like the theme for like over a hundred events across the country where, you know, we bring in dealers and kind of like wine and dine them and tell them about like all the new stuff coming to Capital One. Um, so it's just like really cool. I'm on a project right now that I don't know if I can talk about too much, but it involves Las Vegas. Uh, and I'm super excited for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still like has all these really cool opportunities. I'm still also doing like emails. I'm designing emails. No one can get away from that either in agency or in house. Everyone designs emails and it's, you know, not the greatest, but you got to do it. Questions? What's your favorite thing to work on? Like, do you like making ads? Do you like making logos? I love poster design. It's, my, it's one of my favorite things to do because, you know, you can kind of tell a story in just a poster or it's, it really grabs people's attention. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of take that and I uh, post on Instagram a lot. I've been drawing a little bit and Instagram is just a fun way just to kind of like, you know, puke stuff out, I guess, and like throw it up there. Um, but yeah, just kind of quick ideating and it's fun. So, oh, oh. Um, how long did you go to like school, like college for your degree? <laughs> well, I had two majors, um, so it was a little, little different. Um, but I did three years as a full time photo major, and then I added the second major and did another two years. Um, our program also worked where you did two years in commerce for like. Like if I was just a design major, I still would have had uh, five years, but I would have had a much easier time with the five years instead of cramming everything. Um, but the way our program worked is you did two years in Commerce, Texas, where you learn the basics and the fundamentals, and then three years in Dallas. Um, so yeah, five years in total, two of which I was a design major, and here I am. So change your major, guys. Go be a designer if you're not already. It's not too late. <laughs> Thank you so much all of now. Thank you guys. Thank you.